white nectarine, yellow nectarine. Thank you everyone for coming out. This is a, a great opportunity. It's nice to see all your faces and smiles and um, thank you to our host. This is, a, this is a great opportunity to come up to North County and uh, thank you Sharon for organizing and, and your committee. The, um, the program committee has done a great job this year. We have uh, a lot of fantastic events signed up. So a big round of applause for, for Sharon. Yeah. If thank you. Got just a couple of announcements, uh, a couple of exciting, I think really exciting things. We have uh, we have just passed some scholarships for how many students? Twelve. Twelve wow. students wow. from Woo. Cal Poly are going to be receiving scholarships this year, and I want to give a big, uh, big, well, a huge thank you to Nell and her team as the scholarship committee for. The selection of the applicants and going through a process to try and get these applicants money in their hands for this school year. So now if you want to take just a couple minutes and share uh, about the scholarships, I, I'd love to hear. Don't a need that. <laughs> I'm loud enough. Um, we had 12 applicants this year as a result of not doing any scholarships for the last three years due to the pandemic. And he gave us, Seth gave us a lot more credit than we needed because we didn't pre-approve these people. Dr. Garner did it all. Oh, wow. She did all of the uh, recruiting of it. She did the, uh, the references, checked them all for them. She did it all, presented to, the, to us in a beautiful little package. And then we all just had to decide, well, who gets more and how much do we get? Karen is going to be um, distributing seven fifteen hundred dollar checks and five nine hundred dollar checks to these individuals and they are so unique i mean because we didn't have three years we have a lot of undergraduates and some of these people want to go get phds and plant diversity and uh, uh keeping genetic diversity going for the historical groups another one just wants to farm somewhere uh, a third one is uh, taking all of her knowledge and bringing it to Hawaii on her family's 40 acres. I mean, these kids are amazing, and I am so thrilled that, that we had something to do with it and that we're able to go further. Um, at the next board meeting, we're going to be talking about a lot more things that we want to go further with it and um, see what the board wants to go ahead and do in the future with these, with these scholarship programs. So thank you very much. Oh, one more thing. One of the things we've decided, we need to do some more fundraising. And part of that is community activism. You know, we're going to the different, uh, the Master Gardeners or the Royal Grande Harvest or something like that. And we've got our little tents going and we're selling plants. That's all wonderful. But we're also going to have little scholarship jars asking for donations at all of these places. And it'll be strictly for the scholarship program. And we'll be putting it out on all the different places that we attend. So, okay. Thank you. You can fill them with cash, checks, or whatever we can, whatever we can offer up for our students. Um, that's our number one source of where our, our money goes is to uh, scholarships. So all of your, your, you know, exorbitant dues, that $6 a year that you have to pay for a local membership, <laughs> that goes to the scholarship fund. All of our plant sales, all of the uh, rootstock sales, we sell a lot of rootstock at the uh, Scion exchanges. Are those happy? Yes, yes, those, those events. Uh, so those fundraisers are really important. That helps advance our mission to not only just be a generous person, which we all want to be that way, but also to encourage the next generation, right? We're not getting any, any younger. We need young folks. I'm looking at those two ladies in the back there, and those two ladies over here. We need that generation to be excited about growing fruit if we're going to have uh, the skills and knowledge that we've gained over however many years uh, be passed on. So uh, thanks to the scholarship committee and those, those students, Dr. Gardner, um, for all of that. Uh, we have another exciting event coming up, the Harvest Festival. Some of you, uh, I think Jenny and Dara are going to do that. Marv, I think you're going to be involved in that. That's September 24th uh, from 8 to 4 o'clock. If you're interested in assisting, Tucker Schmidt is heading up that committee. Uh, if you don't has, have his contact information, uh, just ask me. I can get you his, his cell. Uh, we're asking for plant donations. 
not for Tucker, he's got enough. He's gonna be trying to sell those at the Harvest Festival. And that money is gonna then go to our scholarship fund. So if you have something laying around that someone might pay a couple of bucks for or 20 bucks for, um, make sure and get it to Tucker the day before. Okay, don't bring it to him on Saturday morning because he's already gonna be on site. So by Friday or even sometime that week, uh, you can probably bring it by my house or I don't know, Jenny, do you want yes, some plants I'll for uh, for a few days to babysit? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, plants, not ornamental. Yes, no fruit. ornamentals. So that's a pretty good distinction to, to have. Fruit, fruits and vegetables. Edibles. Um, ed edible type plants. Yeah. Non cannabis. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the <laughs> Okay, what, what else do we have? So we have uh, scholarship. We talked about uh, Harvest Festival. Uh, we've got some great programs coming up for October. Thanks, Sharon, for planning that. We've got November lining up as well. December, we're going to be having our end of the year celebration. So each month through the rest of the year, we've got something happening, and uh, it's looking to be a, a great year. Thank you, everyone, for being part. Um, if I haven't introduced myself, I'm, I'm Seth McMillan. I'm the co-chair this year, and I see we have a couple of new faces in the back, and I'd like to give them an opportunity to introduce. Let us know where you live, what you like to grow, what you want to grow, or we're interested in learning about. Uh, Jared, you want to yeah, share? Jared Williams, my wife Erica. Um, we're kind of starting out right now, so we're here to learn. Um, we're out in North County in Atascadero. So. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, guys. And John and your family? Yeah, John Obayashi, my wife Crystal. This is Ellie and Evie. We live in Arroyo Grande. and. Very humble front yard and backyard area to use with hard packed clay. So we're just, yeah, we were just intrigued when you shared that you grow rare fruit and we wanted to see what we could do with what we have. We want to learn how to grow an apple tree. Commercial scale, right? Uh, <laughs> you think it's something that maybe like uh, just half like this, one. This is one of the great things about our, our organization. We have a, a commercial operation here, and then we have a small backyard grower. So we have the full spectrum here, and I think uh, I think that's fantastic. We can all learn from each other. Um, if there are any other announcements? You know what, I'll share something. I actually have gone the last two years, and I'm going this year, and it's really fun to go to, and that is the annual Almond Conference. It's up in Sacramento, and it's free. I stayed at an Airbnb walking distance last year. I plan to do the same this year. It's in December. I, I want to say December, roughly around the 6th or so. You can just Google California Almond Conference. Really organized. You learn, you see huge machinery, which is fun, but you also learn about um, fertilizing. There's also, some of the growers are there as far as um, fruit tree growers. It's super fun, the Almond Conference. Yeah. No matter if you say almonds or almonds, it's a cash cow nut for California, the largest producer of almonds in the world. We chuckle when farmers call the nut an almond, and that way of saying it is usually linked to the older generational farmer. The pronunciation line seems to be north of Modesto for almonds and almonds for farmers south of Merced. So why the two names? From Dr. Ken Albala at the University of the Pacific, quote, large number of Dutch settlers in our area a century ago, and the word is amadel, and it's also pronounced that way in other parts of California. Once again, from Dr. Ken at UOP, quote, mostly growers say almonds because they shake the L out of them. There is a tiny truck which attaches to each tree and shakes all the nuts off. It feels like an earthquake, end quote. <laughs> Okay, does it, Mel, go ahead. Just one, uh, in December we also do one of our fundraisers and it is the plant sale. So if you got started right now and start getting cuttings and get going so that we can go ahead and sell to each other all our wonderful plants in December. That's right, December meeting we're gonna do a, we typically do a raffle. Mm -hmm. uh, so we bring all of our plants and donate a few bucks and exchange with each other. Um, and that's going to be the time that we're going to talk about the, the surveys. We're going to go ahead and give that uh, offering, um, which reminds me, surveys, very important. We want your input. The, the board, the local board here wants to know what you want out of this organization. It's not my organization. Uh, it's certainly not Dick or Linda's. Just because we're officers, it's about you guys. Okay, so what you want, 
uh, we'll try and help get there. So fill out a survey. Um, there's going to be something, some kind of giveaway at the end that's going to be worth your while. So if you haven't done it already, please fill out. I think Sharon's got some surveys here. In the Go pink ahead and, box. Uh, in the pink box here. Go ahead and fill it out. Complete it back. Uh, give it back to her. And uh, yeah, let us know what you think. Let us know what we're missing, what we're doing well. Your name is on it, but if you know things are not going well, we want to know also. Okay, so no, no hard feelings. You're not going to certainly hurt my feelings for yammering on too long. You can write that in there. Right mm -hmm. but, and there's also a survey monkey, and then uh, we also email the surveys to you. So you can mail them to me. You can do a hard copy, email it to us. However you want to do it. We tried to get all the technology covered. <laughs> for everybody so, and there's another guest here too our first day there, there is a another first timer would you like to share yeah. um, my name is Lori Gomer and uh, Marv suggested attending this meeting I'm fairly new to the area I have I have space that has not been planted at this stage of the game and so I'm trying to get an idea of what to do Okay. Fantastic. A clean slate. Well, there, there are a couple of opinions you might get from this group on this. <laughs> yeah. so you have a notepad, right? Lots of pages. I have my phone. I have notes. <laughs> and you're friends with Mark, so you're in yes. good hands. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, thanks, everyone. I'll, I'll stop talking and, and let our hosts come up and talk about... Uh, talk about their operation, the history behind the ranch, a little bit about themselves, and uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to you guys, and take it away. Come on up. You're welcome to use the microphone. Uh, Thank you. First of all, welcome uh, for being here. Uh, my name is Alex Martinez. Uh, I'm the manager of this operation, this orchard. My father over here uh, is the very first person that started this uh, orchard, uh, established in 1992. Agnulfo Martinez is his name. Uh, it all started from looking for work. He found this place. Uh, I was still in high school, finished high school, came in here, helped him, told him, hey, let's, let's get out of here. Wow. Let's do something else. He has 20 years uh, experience cutting glass. Uh, as you can see, I never succeeded. So I <laughs> <laughs> uh, we come from a background of, of, of growing. He used to grow beans back in Mexico, uh, corn mainly. Uh, so I've been here ever since. Uh, I went from helping him out to running this whole orchard uh, from checking water, to spraying, to tilling, mowing, picking, forklifting, everything. We have uh, about 15 to 20 varieties of apples. Wow. Uh, where the new people wanted to plant one tree, your key is water. <laughs> <laughs> the main key is water and a sprinkler, no dripping. Uh, we came to learn that the hard way we had, we started out with a drip line. It would, it would grow fruit, it would give you fruit, but it would give you tiny little apples. Uh, if you irrigate with sprinkler, you, you get a good decent uh, size on them. Uh, yeah, we, uh, can you see them? We have about 40 acres. Uh, mainly we sell Fuji and Pink Lady as our strong uh, sellers. Uh, then we got Gala, Early Fuji, Rayburn, Cameo, Jonah Gold, Macintosh, uh, Red Delicious, Golden Delicious, Granny Smith, Pippin, Rusted Apple, uh, Rayburn. Rayburn. Uh, so many of them. Uh, there was a little time where right before thinning slows down for the for the 
previous owner. Well, this this orchard was uh, sold two years ago uh, to a new person named Russell Russell Stengel. Uh, he came in strong, wanted to learn, wanted to make this thing great, better. The first thing he saw was a lot of waste on the ground. And that thing is inevitable uh, from, uh, you got, if you don't thin your trees correctly, you leave bunches one to two, so the fruit will grow, start pushing the other one around, so you get a lot of, a lot of droppings. Uh, wind, wind is a major thing around here too. Uh, heat stress, mm -hmm. trees get heat stress. So if you kind of skip a week or whatever about watering and you get some heat stress, it will drop your fruit regardless of anything. Uh, he said, what can we do about our waste or, you know, towards the end of the year, we would have some apples left on the cooler and so I've been telling them to make juice with our seconds and whatnot. So the juice that you just try right now, mm -hmm. uh, we turn all that waste into juice. Oh, so good. delicious, delicious. Uh, we are gonna continue to make more juice mm -hmm. and uh, make more apples. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> No, we were just frustrating looking around because they wanted stone fruit. They didn't see so we were like, I'm just starting out. You're all going to rub the pocket. Just only take one no touch. When the when the tree when the bark when the sap is flowing, right, the bark will slip. Right. If you try it before that, you can't get the bark right. to separate from the wood. Right. right. But as soon as the the soon as it will slip. You cut your tree, you put a knife on the side, you can tap, around, tap it into the bark, or you, if it's a smaller tree, you can force it in. You go through until the knife hits the wood. Okay. Okay, so, so, you are so now you've cut all, the now you've, and you use a straight blade. Okay. Now you've cut all the way through the bark down a couple of inches. Okay, so it's And like then this. I just hold it and turn, and it lifts the bark out on one side. Okay. So that one side stays tight, the other side lifts mm -hmm. out. And then I take, then I take uh, my, uh, and this would be a good one. Yeah. Knife is not quite grafting knife sharp, but it'll work. Oh, some grafting knives, you got to be careful because they'll, okay. they have to yeah, be really, so really sharp. See. So then I made this nice flat side here and yeah. I've, I've taken the back off so that it, it's not a big bump. Okay. Then this slips down on that part that's been lifted out. This goes down against the wood right down to where there's just a little bit of just a little bit of this sticking up about where the where the stump is so this goes down in there that piece of bark gets laid back on it you do three of them or whatever and then you wrap the outside with uh with uh garden you know the green um uh, pruning tape or garden tape garden and either green or white you usually seal the top with grafting seal or you know uh, prune tree seal and that's it and three weeks later they're, they're so what's great. touching what the cambium this right this. here the, the, the can't well this one's carved but yeah. the cambium right it's around there. there all the way around is touching the cambium of the tree of the so you tree have really itself. good cambium okay. contact okay and it almost can't not grow okay it just you know they will grow yes okay. How especially with apples cool how far do you want to insert this how much of the cyan do you want in underneath you know the on the one top. on one this size i would leave i call it the church window when you do this when you do this mm -hmm. you have this little rounded part Correct. i put it down to like right okay. like that 
and then how much how much is actually much then depth? under the bark all of yeah. it all, all, of, all of it well there's give me, a crack. give me a measurement boss okay <laughs> like how long how long should this piece be is like so that would this be good i'd like, say i'd say at least an inch and a half two inches wouldn't hurt okay okay, okay. what do you think yes yeah. 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 a couple first. inches yeah okay because you want as much cambium contact as you can uh -huh. But you also don't want so much that it holds the bark too far out, right? Yeah. So okay, this side gotcha. is pretty pretty small. Okay. So, it so would, this is a good diameter, that, Yeah, pencil size is good. And how many buds would you leave? Three. Two. I would leave two. Joe used to do three, right? He'd like to have three. Yeah. yeah. I only, you only need one. I would leave two, you know, because if one gets knocked off, you still have one. Mm -hmm.